due to, let's say, to opening remarks, not due to the happy process. So when you ask the question, please identify yourself. Thank you very much, uh, Frederick. It's good to see you. Some some of you I saw yesterday, and uh, it's good to see you again. Um, so, um, as, as I said uh, last night, uh, we had a very constructive uh, trip to Tehran, and uh, there is um, uh, an agreement that we have now on important uh, matters relating to the equipment and the continuity of knowledge that we will be establishing through it. Uh, but I would uh, love to tell more about it through the lens of your own questions. So without further ado, I am at your disposal. Thank you very much. Uh, Francois Murphy from Reuters. Oof. Hello. Uh, hi, DG. Uh, since we're lucky enough to have you two days in a row, I thought we'd try and um, try and pin you down on some things that were left a bit open uh, sure. yesterday. Sure. Um, uh, first of all, on uh, so it's clear that you're um, going to meet Mr. Islami on the sidelines of the general conference, but then on the on the return leg on your trip uh, to Tehran that you hope to have, I'm just wondering, do you have a, a clearer commitment than what was in your statement about when you're going to go to Tehran and who you will meet there? Uh, um, and uh, also on the issue of the uh, the centrifuge workshop where your cameras were destroyed, damaged, etc. So you have there's missing footage from uh, one of those cameras. Uh, can you tell us uh, whether you, how how you're going to go about recovering that missing footage? Do you have any specific commitment from Iran on that? Thank you very much. Um, regarding the the first part and the the upcoming, um, the next uh, meetings with Iranian uh, government and officials, uh, like as you say, is correct. The new head of the AOI, uh, Mr. Islami, will be coming to Vienna next week, and uh, we are going to meet uh, on, on that occasion. And as agreed in Tehran, I'm going to be coming uh, to returning to Tehran uh, very soon. Um, the Exact date has still must still be precise, um, but it's the idea is that it is quite soon. So uh, um, naturally after Mr. Islami's visit here, but uh, but very soon, very soon. And as as it was said, you know, for politeness' sake, I shouldn't be saying I will be seeing X Y. It is clear that it's high level talks with the government of Iran, so that does not leave uh, much room for speculation. It's going to be a very high level, which is needed, not for the sake of being, you know, seeing, um, uh, you know, the top of the government. It's because, um, I, in my assessment, uh, precisely because it is a new, I said it in Tehran, uh, it's, it's a new government. It's a government that has uh, very firm ideas on these issues. So I think it's essential that we get to know each other and that we listen to each other. So I hope this to happen very soon. Regarding the second part, uh, we are going. We are going to be. Um, we we had a first opportunity uh, to look into the equipment in Karaj. As you know, this has been reflected in one of my reports. So we have a pretty good idea of what we have there, and uh, we um, are satisfied that the, the Iranian side has. Um, indicated that at a technical level they are going to be exchanging uh, information with our teams so that uh, we can uh, perform all the activities that need to be performed. Um, we still need to see uh, the degree of, of, of gap that there, there may be, but as you know there are redundancies and there are ways to reconstruct um, the uh, information, of course. Thanks, DG. Hello. Jonathan Tyrone with Bloomberg. Uh, one very brief question. Can you give us an update on the online um, enrichment uh, monitoring um, mechanisms, the OLEM? The, yes. Yeah. Uh, are they still installed and not working, or, or have they been removed entirely? No, no, they are there. OK. And then the second question is um, relative to the physical inventory verification. 
Paragraph 81 of the InfoCERC 531 uh, states that depending on the chemical composition and whether uranium is enriched to high or low levels, that the frequency of uh, PIVs can be increased. So you've, in, you, you, you've reported now two consecutive um, um, uh, reports that you're unable to verify the stockpile of uh, fissile material. Why haven't you increased the number of PIVs? Because that clearly falls under the CSA. Well, I must tell you that when it comes to the type and the intensity of the activities we carry out in a country, not only in Iran, in any country, uh, we, uh, I decide on the basis of the advice of the Deputy Director General and his technical team uh, how we, um, I would say, distribute our resources and our intensities. And of course, this is not a matter that we discuss in public. But I can tell you that we always go for the best point in the curve, the one that is going to give us the maximum return in terms of information. This is um, something that it is invariable. So if it's how many PIVs or how many types of, this is a matter of a technical judgment that the inspectors tell me about and then we decide. I'm sorry, but I mean, the, 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 Iran is the only uh, non-nuclear weapons state in the NPT that, uh, you know, is enriching to 60% uh, levels of purity. Indeed, I've I said mean, it many and, times. And, 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 and I mean, the CSA clearly allows you to increase the number of um, uh, physical inventory verification visits. And I'm just simply asking what, why, why you're still unable to uh, verify the amount of uh, fissile material if you have the capacity to do that. We are exercising as our capacities to the maximum. But as I say, our capacities are not concentrated on a single um, instrument for verification. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi, Rahida uh, Bahnam from Al Arabiya. Ah, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, when you were in Tehran, you said that you received new promises from Iran. Uh, when you were in Tehran yesterday, yes, yes. you said you received new promises from Iran to cooperate uh, when it comes to the particles the IAEA found uh, in secret locations. Uh, you have been receiving those promises for nearly two years now. Uh, has there been anything new to build on? Or do you not feel that you now need maybe a tougher approach, uh, push towards a board of governors resolution in order to get Iran to cooperate? Because these are the same promises you've been receiving with no results, no different results. Well, first of all, thank you for the question. First of all, I did not receive any promise. Um, what uh, I uh, said to them, and I, I think it was very clear, is that given the seriousness of the situation, and I think I have described it, described it very clearly in my reports, uh, what I think or to, what I assess about the situation and what has been happening for the past uh, couple of years or even more in some cases, it's, it's well described there. So I was not seeking uh, in this trip uh, promises. What I uh, said there, and I said it to you, and I continue to say it, is that uh, I need to have a clear conversation with the new government about this, precisely to a certain extent to what uh, you are mentioning, the fact that we have been trying in different ways to have a more focalized effort, having um, a compartmentalized um, analysis of each one of the situations. And for the time being, we have not received the kind of uh, feedback that we need. So at this point in time, with a new government, and as you know, with a government that has quite firm views on uh, matters related to uh, the uh, nuclear program, their past, the present, and the future, I, as Director General, need to sit down with them, tell them how I see the whole picture, and uh, tell also what I expect from them, and to hear from them um, as well. So uh, I did not get any promises. One thing I got is the agreement that this 
uh, is something that needs to be done. And this is why I hope to be very soon in Tehran to uh, have this type of uh, conversation, which is, which is badly needed. For a tougher approach, you don't see that it's necessary to take a tougher approach. Well, tougher or less tough is in the eye of the beholder. What I can tell you is that from day one, I have had an approach with Iran which is firm and fair. So they have every opportunity to respond, they have every opportunity to collaborate with us, but we have been um, exposing and putting on the table every uh, information that we have, we have sought clarification, and we have characterized the cooperation uh, or lack thereof in terms that uh, leave no room for speculation. Mm? So I believe that the record of what we have been doing speaks for itself in terms of the, I would say, seriousness of the approach. Tough, less tough, this is for analysts to, to evaluate or for member states. We do our job. Thank you. Hello, DG. Um, Hello. Just in the care of from Agence France Presse, good to see you. Hello. Um, <coughs> just two questions, if I may. Yes, <laughs> if I may. Um, you were referring just now to the new government and the talks that you hope to have. Yes. I think you were possibly alluding to the fact that you know, the administration of Raisi is widely seen as being more hardline, more conservative than that of uh, the outgoing President Rouhani. What would you say to those people who say there's not really much point in waiting for the new government to sort of find its feet and, you know, you're not going to get a more positive, a more helpful response on these issues given their standpoint? And secondly, regarding the equipment, um, I mean, am I right in thinking that f for at least some of this, the IEA normally has real-time access to the footage? So therefore, given the amount of time that's elapsed, how long is it going to take you? Do you have an estimate of how long it would take you to get back to speed, as it were, to, to go through all this footage and evaluate it? I mean, the well, longer yeah, it goes. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I take both. Let me start with this part, which is more technical than, than, than the first part of your question, which was more political. In this regard, what I would say is that we have to remember that the, the um, um, uh, system that we have in place for this um, monitoring um, activities um, is uh, um, uh, singular, I would say. And it was uh, decided, and it was uh, adopted, and it started as a result of uh, one of my visits to Tehran back in February when it was announced by the government that uh, a number of uh, uh, accesses and verification activities would cease as a result of a law. So we came up with a proposal and we set up this system, which is a system that has certain um, limitations as well. As I have explained in the past, it has certain limitations. It gives us the, I would say, the advantage of the continuity of the monitoring, registering, taping, having all these stats, images, and information, but we are not making the assessment now. This is very important. We are not evaluating now, as we speak, what's happening. This is like uh, an IOU. Huh? Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a document, it's a bank document that we are going to be able to cash when there is an agreement uh, on the JCPOA level because this is a system that uh, allows for things that would not normally be allowed uh, beyond the uh, CSA. So it's a very delicate line, uh, which, but it's working, it's a practical it's a practical thing that is working, and I was glad to see yesterday that the government um, and the new head of the EOI uh, agreed that uh, for it to be uh, real, for it to be effective, well, we have to do all this technical servicing and so on. And this is why I spoke about a communication breakdown, because we were talking to them, telling them, well, every 
every such time, every three months or every, we, we need to service it, we need to check the batteries, we need to change the memory, etc. So this was, this was done. So once we, we are assured that the storage of information, the flow of information is continuing, then we can say, well, we will have the raw material for, at the right time, engage in that exercise that you were describing of making the, uh, the assessment. So this is one thing. And, they, and for the first part, um, you were saying, what would, you, what would you say to them? Well, what I said yesterday, of course, in more detail, uh, but uh, basically that we need to engage. These things are not going away. We cannot wish them away. They are there, they are well known, and uh, th we need to address them together, Iran and the agency. So uh, the, the, the point of having this conversation is to, to get an understanding of how they uh, intend to go about it. And we, of course, we are always, uh, as it should be, because we are the technical organization, we are always going to be proposing technical ways to, to, to get there. And this is what we are going to be working on. Sorry, just a, just a very quick follow-up, if I may. So if I can just press you a little bit more on when you come to that point of yes. cashing the IOU, as you put it, yeah. how, how difficult will it be for you to, to catch up, to, to go through all well, of that? Well, it is, it is something that has, uh, to a certain extent, never been done before, but it's not something that is beyond the, the capacity of my uh, technical teams. It, it, it can be done. They have a, a unique expertise and, and knowledge about the program, about the machines, the way they operate um, under different uh, kinds of circumstances. We have a mass of statistical information against which we can ascertain whether through a certain period of time it is normal to have such a volume or not. So the, 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 the mass of information, analytical information we have is huge. So we can do it, no doubt about it. Yeah, hello. It's Hannah Kaviani from Radio Farda. Nice to see you. Hello. Hello. Um, I have two questions. Yes. One is about what you said last night that about the servicing and the memory cards. You said it's happening in a few days, very soon. Iranians are reporting, Iranian media is reporting that that is very much dependent on what's going to happen at the Board of Governors meeting, if that is going to be any relations, in your opinion, about between the two, if there would be a resolution against Iran, if still your agreement stands. And the second question I have is about, you mentioned incident, which uh, happened in Karaj facility. I want to know if you know the nature of this incident, and this so-called incident, how in general it impacts your work and the monitoring work of IAEA inspectors in Iran? Yes, well, on, on the first part, um, regarding what may or may not happen at the board, I think it is normal that there is this type of uh, speculation, but as, as you saw, uh, nowhere in the joint uh, statement that I agreed to with uh, Dr. Islami, it is said that all of this is valid unless there is a resolution at the uh, Board of Governors or uh, only if there is no resolution. So uh, the, the two things are not, uh, um, you know, one is not contingent uh, to, to, to the other. Uh, so uh, this is uh, one, one point. Uh, second, uh, on, on the uh, events that took place in, in Karaj, it is not for me to characterize them. It's for the authorities of uh, Iran, and I understand there is an investigate, there's an ongoing investigation about that. And I would say that in terms of how it affects, well, as you, you can see how it affects it. Our equipment was destroyed. So it's not good in that sense, and in general, um, any violent event is not uh, good if there was violence there. So what we did is we do our technical work, we concentrate on our equipment, what was there? How is it? Was it affected? Uh, is there anything missing? And this is, some of it I informed uh, in the report, 
and some, some of it we are still assessing. Uh, and we will be doing the assessment, and at the same time, we will be replacing what has been damaged. Hi, this is Jordi from EFE. Nice to Hola. see you today. My impression is that somehow you are like in a transition phase because the new government in Iran, there's new experts, new people negotiating with you. How long can this go on like this? I mean, is it a question of weeks or months until your both sides have met each other several times and sufficiently so that you can work again together? Is it, uh, what do you think? I mean, how many more? Well, yes, it's a very pertinent it? question. And this is why I was so intent in uh, on having uh, a, a clear um, agreement on their part to have a, a high level uh, discussion because we cannot continue to go on in this way. Uh, the, the issue is an issue of uh, of the highest important importance for Iran and for the world. So it is obvious that as a director general, I have to uh, have this conversation. When you say what is the time, I hope it's a matter of days, uh, not months, certainly. Uh, it, it's days, in, in one week, uh, the uh, head of the AOI will be here, and, and soon thereafter, I will be traveling to, to Iran. And, and, and we will take it from there. We will be discussing after that happens, uh, Jordi. Uh, hello. Mr. Hello. Uh, Homo Lesgi from Press TV. Yes. Um, concerning this agreement or arrangement that you had with Tehran, and uh, you talked about it last night as well, uh, can you tell us how long this arrangement has been extended for? First, we had the three months, then an extra month. This time, is it just no specific time frame? Uh, and uh, you did also mention that when the JCPOA is restored, of course, you'll have the assessment. But what happens if the JCPOA is not revived? It, has there been a decision on that? Will Iran destroy the data? Uh, have you talked about that, or is that something you want to discuss later? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you may have seen that uh, this issue of the length has not been addressed. And the, the, the fact is that we, um, having discussed this, we agreed that um, it is uh, better and more practical to uh, go about it as developments evolve. Um, you rightly mention that at the basis, the philosophy of this um, uh, idea, this joint endeavor that we have uh, with, with Iran is that it is a stopgap, as I said uh, last night, it is a breach uh, to give us some monitoring and verification capacity until there is something hopefully better, which would be going back to all the additional transparency measures as um, envisaged in the JCPOA. If this doesn't happen, well, then I will again, yet again, unlike the situation in the past, I will have to discuss this with the new government because the previous government had a different take on this. They wanted to have a more uh, tabulated sort of, uh, uh, and extend the IOU <laughs> for periods of time. In the end, uh, that led us to a situation where we, we ended up in limbo. I think that did not help either Iran or the IAEA. So uh, with, with, Ms. with Dr. Eslami, we decided to take a practical approach. We are in agreement that this is what we're going to do now. We are doing it. Um, and then we will be seeing how things uh, evolve, hopefully for the better. Hello, DG. Uh, how are from television. How are you? Um, the, I have two questions. One is on DPRK. So I just want to first start with the Iran yes, issue. Yes, please. My um, pleasure. The, I, Iran has started enriching up to 60%. Now, that is a completely a different level from the what we had before. And in a countries like Japan as well, like any countries who has advanced enrichment program is under a very strong scrutiny under just normal circumstances with or without JCPOA. So do you think that you might or IAEA might want to uh, so to reframe the whole activities of the verifications in light of this new development. Because I think that the cameras, real-time assessment is part of 
the normal verification under the, the normal verification system, in my view. And Iran is not doing it at the moment because Iran is blocking you to have an access to all the data. Of course, that sort of is not just a 60% part, but it's sort of like where the rota is created. But all the, I think, IAEA should have the whole view of the enrichment program in light of this new. So would that sort of be back of your mind? And would that be sort of considered to be discussed when you meet the new government? That's the question number one. And I would withhold because the second one regards to the DPRK. Thank you. Well, y it's, thank you. It, it's very interesting, but it's a bit too speculative. We do, with all due respect, because uh, what you're telling me is, you know, and I won't repeat all, all that you said, but uh, it's, it's full of ifs, ifs, ifs. So at the moment, we have a system which perhaps I can be, br bring a zest of precision to what you said, in that what we do uh, is not only what is a part of a normal comprehensive safeguards agreement, we have uh, a number of uh, activities that are part of what we have been discussing for the last uh, half hour or so. So uh, different activities that take place in agreement with, with, uh, with them. So uh, there is this, this uh, uh, separate uh, layer that is, that is there. Um, then that scenario we should see. My hope is that uh, we will get back to a higher level of transparency because I would agree with you that with these levels of, an, of, of uh, and not only enrichment, with this level, the, with this breadth of activities uh, which are legitimate, uh, at the same time, they require a commensurate, commensurate uh, verification and inspection uh, presence. So um, this will be something that we will see as the story unfolds, unfortunately. So I wouldn't like to speculate on what could be done in very precise terms, but I would be happy to continue the conversation with you when this happens. Uh, the second question is yeah. on DPRK. Yes. Uh, we do appreciate your re issuing the report every year. Um, this year I have, uh, after having read it, uh, I have a feeling that the DPRK's activities, apart from not testing, is really back before the Singapore agreement, meaning that they're doing the reprocessing, they're starting the firing up the, the nuclear uh, the reactor once again to get the spent fuel. So what is your assessment on this? That the, Are they back before that level? Or do you even say that they are actually escalating? Their well, I would say that the reports are clear in indicating that we see uh, many activities ongoing in different sites. So um, having a, as a point of reference uh, the level of activities before the summit meeting uh, between the then President of the United States and the leader, um, I don't think that is a metric that would help much uh, because, uh, as you know, we don't have an on-site uh, presence. Our inspectors have been um, barred from the country and expelled back in 2009. We do have a pretty good uh, impression of what is going on uh, by, uh, through different means, but to go to that level of granularity, it would not be helpful. What is clear is that this program is continuing, contrary to the resolutions of the United Nations Security Council, and it's growing. And this is clear. Uh, thank you. I am Ahmad Samadi from Iran International TV. Hello. I have, hello. I have two questions. Yes. Uh, you told you will travel to Tehran very soon. Uh, does any confirmed date or it will be conditional? Not yet. And second question is resolutions before the IAEA Board of Governors keep being put on hold in order to preserve the diplomacy to revive the nuclear deal. And in the process, Iran's outstanding safeguards issues remains uh, unresolved. Mm -hmm. You told today in your uh, opening speech, are you concerned uh, 
this is undermining the IAEA's missions and the NPT? Thank you. Well, I said in my report that I'm concerned and that our activities are being undermined because of this situation. Um, I would not extend that affirmation to the NPT, but I would certainly say that we need to redress uh, this situation. Um, and we have to, to tackle it as soon as, as soon as possible. Yes. Thank you. Hi, thank you, sorry. I have another question. Uh, in your opening remarks uh, today to the Board of Governor, you said that the lack of process in clarifying the agency's questions concerning the correctness and completeness of Iran's safeguard declaration seriously affects the ability of the agency to provide assurance of the peaceful nature of Iran's nuclear program. Does that mean that at the moment you cannot provide assurances that Iran's nuclear program is peaceful? Well, th what that means is what is said in the report. That means that when there are questions and w there, are, there is information that may indicate that there have been activities not reported and there has been material not reported, then the logical conclusion of these two simple affirmations is that there is a question mark around past declarations. And it is in this sense that we are saying that the completeness and the correctness of the declarations could be put into question. So this is why we believe um, that it, this is an additional uh, reason why we must say that uh, we, we are going to clarify this. Otherwise, we cannot give a complete assurance that everything is in order. There is indication, scientifically proven, that there has been material in places that were not declared. What do we do about that? It's a very simple question. And this is the question I want to repeat to the new uh, government. And I hope I will be getting some answers. Hello, DG. Marcus Eagle from the Nikkei. Hello. Um, I just wanted uh, to ask a short clarification regarding the agreement you reached yesterday in Tehran. Yes. Um, can this be seen de facto as an extension of the technical understanding you reached in February, which ran out earlier this summer? Or is this technical understanding still in limbo as of now? Thank you. No, it cannot be seen as an extension uh, because the, the government decided that they didn't want to and already also the previous government in its last days that they didn't want to go uh, through a formal extension or of, the, of, the, of the previous one. Uh, but we have an operational sort of um, uh, uh, modus vivendi, if you want, uh, whereby we continue to perform these activities and we are even able to um, rectify situations where these activities are um, affected or interrupted um, in some way, as it was the case. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Sorry, hi. Uh, two more questions, I'm afraid. Um, first of all, uh, you said last night that uh, the agreement you've reached with the Iranians is aimed at allowing time for diplomacy. Um, and at several points over the past year, you've talked about how, you know, w as far as the JCPOA is concerned, you can't simply go back to square one because square one isn't there anymore, right? So this idea that there is this constantly evolving uh, reality on the ground in Iran. And several countries on the board have also expressed concern about the issue of irreversible knowledge gain. So I'm simply yeah. wondering if, from your point of view, there is a limit to this time for diplomacy. Is there a point at which it's no longer realistic to actually reach an agreement to go back to the JCPOA in, in, in some way, shape, or form? Um, and a completely different issue, uh, in your JCPOA report, uh, you mentioned the fact that Iran has completed the, I think, fourth step in the process of, of producing uranium metals, the last step. But you also say that what they produced isn't suitable for uh, the stated purpose, which is for use in the Tehran research reactor. Uh, so what happened there? Is that a bad batch? And is it, use, is it usable for something else? So you know, what, what happened there? Yeah. On this one, which is uh, the more technical, uh, I would say we explained that. It's been used uh, to produce silicide for um, fuel plates for the for the for the TRR. Uh, there have been some technical glitches, as it's, it's something that may happen, especially when you are getting into such a sophisticated area as working with uranium metal. So 
uh, they, there have been uh, some issues, but they have addressed them. And uh, uh, the understanding I have from my technical advisors is that this is proceeding. Hmm? So this is moving. Uh, the first question, um, you know, I always like to answer every question, but I think this is not a question for me. Um, uh, for, you know, for how, uh, how, for how, for how long can 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 uh, you know? I'm a diplomat, and I believe dip diplomacy is always possible, and it's the best way to address problems. Can I take one more? Oh, of course, yes, please, with pleasure. Uh, I just had two clarifications. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, the first clarification is you mentioned that any violent event is not good, and I'm just clarifying, does that apply for just Karaj or for the other kinetic events, including the assassinations and the sabotages at Natanz that have occurred in Iran? I mean, are you condemning any kind of sabotage or violent event in Iran against its nuclear facilities, categorically? I think we haven't been discussing this, Jonathan, but uh, of course, as a, as a you know, head of an international organization, we always condemn violence. I mean, there is no question that uh, we okay. would endorse violence. And but then the point was about Karaj yeah. and whether the fact that some of the cameras that we had installed there were damaged was affecting our work. And I said to the lady that, of course, it, it has affected our Right. Work. And then, exactly, on this issue of cameras, I think there's a great misunderstanding about the kinds of monitoring that was cut off in February that affected the additional protocol and the extra JCPOA measures. So at um, uh, the centrifuge workshops, the uranium mining facilities, uh, heavy water, you do have cameras still installed and access to at places like Natanz and Fordo. Is that, is that not we correct? Do. We do. Right. And so how often actually are you going into Fordo and Natanz and checking those cameras and getting the, 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 the footage and bringing it back? As, as often as is required. Okay, so do, do, can you, do, do you know how many, how many cameras, more or less, you have access to right now in Iran? Is it like dozens? Uh... It's, we have access to many cameras, the amount that we need. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for coming to this conference. Thank you very much, um, and I wish you a nice afternoon. Thank you.